What is up, folks? Welcome to another episode of my Jerusalem playthrough. We're getting right up towards the end of the game here. Altrus comes up with urine in one year's time, and we're actually waiting on these provinces to core up. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game. Uh, there's not much more than that going on. I've got, I'm at my Diplo cap, but quite frankly, that is completely inconsequential. I, quite frankly, I just don't care. It didn't take me long to realize that I just don't care. And I'm willing to spend these Diplo points pretty much anywhere. Uh, I am going to take the advice from somebody in chat and actually, or in the comment section rather, and actually start fabricating some claims on Ming. Ming is the only nation that has any sort of significantly large, deve largely developed provinces. And, uh... Yeah, if I actually make a claim on his capital, for example, it will reduce the coring cost by 10%. Now, you guys hate how much I, uh, I hate having my emissaries all the way out in different areas of the world and taking ages to return. So, I am aware of that, but, um, you know, that's part of the reason as to why I have not been doing this. How about we get Japan to help us out? In these wars as well because japan does have a pretty significantly large force some nice generals but uh yeah believe it or not we're actually just chilling and waiting around we're far ahead in military tech that's good despite the last uh, few years oh see where are these generals man look at that that's what i'm talking about where have they been you know way to turn up when like i've literally won the game thanks for that um I always talk about it briefly. I, I try not to complain because overall I have adequate luck. Uh, my luck is good enough. You know, I, I'm usually not that salty or sour in terms of luck um, because it's sufficient. But uh, I do feel like my generals are just bad 100% of the time. I don't know about bad, but uh, very average. And then when I do... When I do get it, we're losing now sailors here. I'm sorry to say. When I do get a good general, they don't seem to stick around long. It's very rare that I'm sort of genuinely happy and celebrating about a uh, a general. Well, I occasionally get them like that. I remember this game, I had a six shock general in the early game, which I was so excited about. And uh, he, he died before... I could use him with anything significant, anything game-changing. But we're just about there on the coring of the Chinese provinces. So I'm wondering about this truce. It ends this year. Uh, in October. Okay, sweet. Now, just like last time, we want to smash Ming as fast as possible. And that's, despite my sailors not being in good shape, that's part of the reason that I've got my troops out here. Ready to go into that island. Still got growing growth in some of these rebel factions. Oh, I should have checked where those rebels spawned. There they are. Let's use our super general there because we're outnumbered. Let's roll another general, I suppose, while we have the super army tradition. It's um, near 100. No way! Another superb general. Cool. See, this is what I mean. We don't exactly need it now, do we? But, you know, I'll take that. Alright, just waiting on these cores here. We don't actually, if some of them are staggered, some of them are not done, we don't need all of them to finish. You know, I don't mind if I'm a little bit uh, overextended or whatever, briefly. So let's have a look. Okay, they'll do us just fine. These can finish up after the war is over. So, 
Let's do urine. We're gonna do the CB, obviously. There's his capital city. Now, uh, I want to begin because we're trying to blitzkrieg Ming. I'm gonna rush up a stack up here to the north to start getting those uh, provinces, which uh, they will make the difference, unfortunately. Those little occupations. I don't see any Ming troops here, so they're probably all up in the north, which is annoying. Dang it. Alright, so the idea is to fully annex Yurin and then give. We can use the new tab. I want to fully annex Yurin and I want to take this from uh, Ming, and uh, that's priority. And give the tab next to the client state. Okay, good. There are some Ming troops here. To hand it all to Rus. That's the plan. Want to have enough troops here to uh, smash any Ming army. Like that. We're doing well on admin points all of a sudden, eh? All right, all right. Ah, okay. I've got a pretty good general here. Shoot, so does he. God dang it. I can't equip my slightly better general. And it's in the highlands. Maybe Ming will beat us there. We just got a bonus through an event to discipline, which is really appropriate. So hopefully we just brutalize Ming even in the highlands there. I'm going to go ahead and give that one to Japan. Way more discipline, way more morale, way more tactics. Good stuff. I doubt we'll stack wipe them, but... Ooh, maybe we will. Oh, seemed pretty close. Alright, I want to get some guys way up here to kind of discover this. Because I know those are going to take a while. Can I catch you here in the farmlands? No. Yep, I can. I'm trying to deal with his armies faster this time. And begin carpet sieging down Ming as fast as possible. I'm going to bring these troops up to the north. I want to see the full annexation here of here and make sure we've got all his provinces on lockdown nope that's not it that's it okay this is Beijing region yep so we'll be taking that one for ourselves just for the flavor let's bring our navy in nowadays dock our navy because um our sailors are actually suffering for the first time since the beginning of the game. No! Okay, we're good. We're good. It's just 1k there. Ah, that's not good though. Knew this would happen. So tedious rolling around those gigantic provinces out there. 
I seem to have stack wiped Ming there. Excellent. That definitely wrecks his enthusiasm. Alright, let's send some more dudes off to the north. I'm going to attach some uh, maneuver. To also get them out there faster. I don't think we're going to make it to reinforce here. It's going to be a month, so we've got to hope that we just win that. Doing surprisingly well. Oh, we made it in. Excellent. Get wrecked. Now that stack is going up there. Uh... Surprise. Whoa, Yaren's got a good general. Let's use our best one there. I've got to stick a stick uh, together with a good stack going up to the north because it just so happens that uh, he's really strong. Ming's got a significant army going up there to the north. Stack wiped, get wrecked. So that's 30. Okay, we're doing well. We're doing well. Getting all these ones up in the north. I'm going to use the same approach, I think. Of not trying to push on towards the very end. Those last few war score points against uh, Ming. And instead I'm going to... Uh, perhaps I'll piece him out earlier. Because what I kind of want to do is um, get him to a point where he's under 100% war score cost and then just truce break him. Oh, we're going to die here, aren't we? Feels bad, man. Just truce break him and fully annex him. That's kind of where I'm trying to get this to. Should be force marching this stack because it's uh, delaying me big time what's this disaster clergy shoot i actually want the papal influence though let's give a generous donation to him What's our war score at? Nice. Pretty high already, I would say. Ah, that's annoying. This takes forever up here. Which is also annoying. But it's kind of unavoidable. Wasteland, okay. I see how it is. But finally, these northern provinces uh, should be a thing of the past. Because I find it very tedious fighting these wars. 
Okay, this guy looks like he's no longer overextended over 100, which is good. That's no longer an issue. Oh boy, that took forever, dude. Damn. I'm just trying to find the province, but I, I just know how stupid it's going to be. I don't know what it's called. This will probably be faster, though. It doesn't have that many. It's certainly faster in terms of the time constraint of the game, which is what I'm more worried about. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, that's one up there in the fog. Got him. All right. Going to take that and give it to Japan. Yeah, so let's get out of this war. I know he's got low enthusiasm. I want to get the best number we can actually can though. 84 is too much. 80 is the highest I've seen so far. Uh, Eighty one. Okay, I think eighty one is going to have to suffice. So it's either eighty one or eighty. It's either eighty one or eighty two anyway. So that might be the best available option. Let's just go ahead and do that. Maybe we could have got one more war score worth, but I'm not sure I could find it if it existed. Oh, okay. I don't want to be coring. I'm not at peace, though. I don't want to be coring these ones in the north, do I? Shoot. Let's cancel this. I kind of feel, though, because we're taking a break... Because we can uh, wait, we're waiting. It's not that we can wait, we kind of have to wait. Uh, to core up the promises with Ming before we go back to war. I kind of feel like... Um, uh, I might call that one up, okay. We're doing well on admin points all of a sudden. Just a few years ago, we, we seemed like we had no admin points remaining. Now we're doing just fine. Okay, so we want the full annexation here, which surely we're about to gain. By just sieging him down. We've got in all the forts already. Check the war score cost of Ming. I am pretty nervous, guys. We see he's over 100%. We're getting really near the end of the game. I think what I'm going to do is one more war will make him under 100%. Right? One more war will make him under 100%. So what I'm actually going to do is try to take all of the tributaries out. So I'll start another war against one of the tributaries to take one more war of him, Ming, one more chunk. And then while we're at war with Ming, we're going to take each of the tributaries out remaining. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and truce break him to finish him off. Now, like I said, we don't you don't need to call the provinces. So we should... Although I think we will be able to call the provinces anyway. Uh, I'm probably going to cut the series short as soon as we've gotten the a world domination. Because I quite frankly don't care about waiting around forever. 
Okay, I know that blockading them here and taking these out will be the best way to disenthuse them. Um, but yeah, I think we would legitimately be able to core up the whole world and everything. Uh, but like I said, it's not a, a necessity. You said 99%. Let's just check them. Okay. All right, there it is. Whew, okay, so let's go ahead and... Uh, Sort all the stuff out. So. I'm going to give the stuff to Japan. He actually has desire anyway. Liberty desire. I'm going to go by areas here. Just for the funsies. Now some of the stuff we've already cored up, but that's okay. Like this one here, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it to him for the funsies. So a lot of people talking about my thoughts for my next uh, playthrough. I've thought about it a lot, guys. One thing I really want to do is uh, one culture, but I know it's going to be extremely tedious. And uh, the thing is, ideally, guys, I think one culture is quite literally the hardest thing you could possibly do, perhaps. Uh, and with that in mind, I have some ideas. Um, for example playing as uh, Aragon, for example. Aragon has a modifier for 10%, which is pretty much the weakest among nations who have a modifier of reduced culture conversion, but they are by far the strongest nation, in my opinion, that has that modifier. Uh, Aragon is sort of a major power and without too much difficulty can become a great power so they're legitimately a strong power i don't actually like their ideas overall uh but yeah that that's one idea i had uh but the the whole point of what i'm trying to say is that uh, if i did play arrogant you know at my level of play within a hundred years there's going to be nobody that is a threat to us with a within a hundred years i would probably be defeating the Ottomans and everything and ev everybody else. Um, so it would become like the late game of this game. Just hanging around, waiting, doing the tediousness and just seeing if I can get there, you know, to that to that final mark. Um, which is kind of lame, in my opinion. Uh, so... The thing is, to, to be clear though, in order to get a one culture, I would need to one tag the world, first of all. Now that that's extremely difficult. Um, but really, I'd have to one tag the world with enough time remaining to where... Well, I'd also need to one faith the world, uh, theoretically. But enough time remaining to where separatism has disappeared... And I can have an even more surplus to convert the provinces to my culture. Uh, so it's crazy, basically. It's, it's going to be really, really difficult. And that's why I think um, playing a powerful nation like Aragon is much smarter than playing a, uh, a weak nation. Personally. Um, but of course, there are some nations that have strong modifiers, like uh, Caraman is, is the uh, most notable, because the reality is that although they are weaker, they have a 20% modifier to reduction of culture conversion, which is actually um, 
10% more, which equates to 10% of the entire world less that you need to deal with, in a sense. So they are arguably as good, if not better, due to their ideas. Um, but yeah, it, it would be extremely difficult. And the one that I really do want to play is the one that everybody suggests. Back to where we go, by the way. Here we go. So we're going to take both of these nations out. And I want to... Reduce Ming down to one, under 100% here. Uh, and I also want to... Declare war on these other nations, his other tributaries here, all at once. So, what I was saying is I want to play Ando here in Japan. That would be the coolest. Uh, they have a 15% modifier. Um, and apparently, I have not confirmed it yet by doing any testing or anything. Apparently, they have another modifier that you can gain by the Shinto religion. Of, I think 15% meaning it's a total of 30% if that was the case meaning that they're in terms of cultural conversion they're actually the best nation in the game to do it in terms of cultural conversion the issue is however that um they're basically a one province minor right so think about that in reference to this game how difficult it would be to one tag the world and some but they're not even European right the Knights at least are European so uh, it would be hard. It would be hard. You know, the, they perhaps have more opportunities than the Knights, but, um, yeah, it would be hard. I think you guys get the point. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but it's kind of way above and beyond anything that I've done here. And it's probably above and beyond the Three Mountains achievement as well, which is something that I also want to do. Uh, and like I said, either way, like in the case of Aragon, it would be extremely tedious, you know? And I'm just not 100% sure. What I would like to do is do something like that when I am already able to live stream. I'm just not 100% sure that people would be on board. Um, you know, I don't think about it too much, guys, but ideally, uh... Like, I, I like to be pretty transparent with you guys, so I'll tell you this. The most successful series that I've done in terms of this myself, like, it's amazing to me because I feel like, okay, this this content is just not that good. Especially compared to the, sorry to go on a bit of a tangent, but the, this content of just playing, like a Let's Play, is not that good. Especially compared to the other content that I push out, which is, quite frankly, a, a ton of work and extremely difficult in various different ways. Um, so in a sense, I feel like this is just not worthy of the views, but then I see other players of this game who get like, you know, tens of thousands of views doing the same thing. Um, what is this? Okay. That's make Mexico. So then I think, okay, I, I could get more views though. I could like other people like to watch people play this game. Uh, but with that in mind, the most successful sort of uh, series, let's play, if you will, that I did of this game was the Roman One Faith, the Roman Empire One Faith. And I did something which is very difficult to simulate, but something that I do wish to simulate if possible, given the opportunity, which is I basically made a How to Own is Byzantium video. That's how I tried to structure it as the first episode. And then I continued on with the series. And that made the first episode like 10 times more popular than any of the other first episodes of any of the other series that I've done because it was like a standalone video. So that's something that I want to take into consideration and try to replicate, but it's very difficult to do that. Uh, and yeah, I was just going to say that ideally, I think these long format series from now on ideally will be live streamed. Um, I am desperately trying to sit out, sort out a situation. I'm pretty poor, guys, and I hate moving. It's like, for me, it's like 
quite literally the worst thing from my experience I've ever done that with the exception of something that shouldn't happen to you do you know what I mean like a freak accident or something like among things that are done I just hate moving it's like the worst thing ever um but that's exactly what I need to do and I'm trying to sort it out I have been for a while uh and I'm gonna do it one way or another because I'm sick of my life where it currently is I'm, I'm sick of uh, like working IRL working hard and trying to work extra hard on this time and like the amount of time and energy and effort that I've put into you know my channel and stuff which is more than I'd like to admit like I've sacrificed real friendships and so on because I don't do stuff like that but it's it's time hopefully that it would be worth its while if that makes sense and I think live streaming by far is the um the way to go there all right let's so that's what i'm thinking i think live streaming chilling everybody chilling together is way better is what i'm trying to say in terms of no why is he so expensive he need okay we can do it we can do it we can do it because the imperialism will reduce by 25% if we're attacking him directly. Okay, we can do it. Ming can be taken out in two wars, one truce break. So that's what we're going to do. We're looking for this then, 98%, which we're almost there. He's got some island out in the Pacific, and uh, that's why uh, I saw it, yeah. Why? That's part of the reason that I couldn't quite get that last bit of war score in the previous wars, and I was confused as to who and what and where the the war score should be coming from. All right, uh, now I have to think, because he's got this as well. Where is... Let's see, I've sieged everything I can now. Crap. Are you going to make this difficult on me, dude? Do I need to go get those last things, or is it just because you're engaged in battle somewhere? Let's assume that we need to go get those last things. Is there a modifier for engage demands? Exceed war so cost crap. Okay, can I do it? So see, theoretically that should be fully annexable. We've almost got that. Um it's gonna take ages, but I'm gonna have to go pick up some troops. Okay. Okay, something changed here. I don't know exactly what. We can do 97. There we go. Okay. All right. So now that we're at peace with Ming, let's hope that we've dealt with all of the tributaries. I think I have. Okay, this is the war leader, so let's piece this one out first. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I was perfectly clear, but my thought process is kind of like um, if and when I do big long format series like this in the future, I would like, if possible, to stream it. And I'm going to try easier said than done uh sort of have my my youtube channel reserved to high quality content that's what i'm going to be trying to do going into the future And I don't know, there might be some people who are like, oh, you're going to stream, I can't make it or whatever. 
um, you know, so take that as consideration as warning, like going into the future that that's my intentions. Like I'm being straight up with you and, uh, you can always watch VODs, which is similar to this over on Twitch when the time comes. But, you know, for those of you that it is a serious issue, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, this is, uh, it's brutal doing this sometimes, especially when you don't feel like doing it. Okay. Hispanol. Crap. We need y'all to participate for me. Finish these wars so I don't need to. So that's Hispaniola. Hopefully he'll go get that now. All right, now Ming tributaries. Is there a way we can check that's uh, quite easy and transparent? Is transparent? Yes, yes. One, we got them all right. We're involved in in three wars against tributaries, and he's got three tributaries. Independent nations don't exist. It's Ming and myself. Let's check the war score cost here. Easy, easy. So. Whew, we don't have much time remaining in the game, but uh, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Uh, next episode, the game's going to be over, because what I'm essentially going to do, is theoretically, uh, I don't need to, guys. So I know we've, we've won the game, if you will. But um, what I am going to do, because we have the time available, is wait to core up most, if not all, of these while we're at peace, which will take about two years. And then I'm going to go ahead and truce break with Ming and uh, fully annex him. Now I believe in some of these obscure provinces he doesn't have any forts or anything, it's just capital. Uh, so that's it. The series will be over next episode when we uh, fully annex Ming. But uh, with, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks to those of you who do watch and stuck here to the very end. It, it means a lot to me and I, I I just really like the idea that you guys do uh, enjoy it, but this is pretty epic. And just like reiterating from the previous episodes, I officially conquered the world as a one province miner, so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Just another notch in my belt as a uh, EU4 player. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next episode.